Someone's going to look at it from a technical part. Someone's going to look at it from just purely imaginative. Somebody's going to look at it from, uh, I'm just going to put it down and see what happens. I mean, that's the unique thing about art. Where it comes from. I think what the, the film part of this is really important for is creating that context. So that people just don't look at it and say, oh boy, the shock value of painting over a Kwang Ho or a Robert Spooner. You know, what is that? So that it's not just that act alone. It's, it's this bigger conversation that we're trying to have about, uh, you know, the, the, the artistic principles. What we have in common as artists, not necessarily what divides us. I start to describe the project a bit to them and their eyes start getting big. And they say, really, <laughs> you're going to allow these artists to paint over each other's paintings? It's, it's really fascinating to see the reaction. So I started formulating this idea of maybe I you know, would work with a bunch of different uh, representational artists, people who I really respect their work, and, uh, and ask if I could paint over their paintings, uh, which has led to a series of really awkward conversations. And there are a lot of artists, and I've talked to some recently, they're like, oh man, no, I would just not do that. Um, 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 there's no way. You know, I don't want anyone painting over my painting or trying to finish it or change anything that I'm doing. But I, I think I did have like one moment of uh, um, initial like, hmm. You know, but then I quickly got over that. I thought, man, this could be like a pretty cool project um, and um, so I thought uh, yeah well, why not see where it goes a Picasso kind of project for me where you know it's, it's a chicken and then it becomes a face and then it becomes a chicken again and it becomes a right. teapot you know? <laughs> <laughs> that's what it just might happen but. it's funny to just to think back that you know the handoff of this artwork it was like a some uh, clandestine drug deal you know where we're off of I-25, shuttling a painting from one car to the other. <laughs> and um, to me, it just, it was kind of a funny thing. That painting I could have sold. <laughs> and that's, he's like, I've had, I had very close people to almost buy that painting. So that might be, um, like later on, somebody will call and say, do you still have that? And I say, well, no. Uh, <laughs> well, I kind of do. It's, it, but you should see it now. Yeah, you should see it now. It's, yeah, it's, well, and then also it's got, it's got, um, it's got another uh, person's name on it too, so. But I said, hey, Doug, this is a great concept, you know? Absolutely. I'd love to do it. Um, and so as this, th this show has developed, I've also asked um, the other artists to do the same thing for my paintings, to, to paint over the top of my work. I was the one that said, oh my gosh, Doug, I would love to be a part of this. Now I realize that I'm uh, having to give away about a dozen of my paintings. <laughs> It not only talks about the, the crossing over of genres and, and you know that divide between the, you know uh, representational traditional artwork and the more kind of conceptual work, and then also the physical act of crossing over somebody else's work. It's a big deal to paint over someone else's work. It takes your breath away. That those first marks on that painting, uh, just <gasps> there's that sense of what am I doing. You know, is this okay? Is this right? I know I have the okay of the other artist, but this is this is kind of a taboo thing. I mean, you go into museums and you're told not to touch, not to even breathe on the paintings or the sculptures. Don't touch them. Don't. You know, this is sacrosanct. You hear of people getting together on a project and building a painting together, but this is a completed painting. And usually, for artists to have a completed painting, it's done. It's it's their baby at that point. So to be able to release that to someone else to work on was just a real novelty to me. So I was excited from the get-go. Tame it a little bit. I'm the last person to say the last word on this. <laughs> yeah, unless he wants it back and you will paint on top of it again. A project like this where 
you're really kind of dancing with another artist to see how you can work together. I think that's just an incredibly powerful idea. And whatever the results are, um, just trying that. I think is, is worthwhile. Well, so the first thing was to study the canvas, to study to see what he was doing on, on a pure visual note. And that kind of puts me on to a certain path. And so once I figured out that path, there was no hesitation. He had a lot of line work and I could see shapes being developed out of those lines and he had a lot of thick paint. His strokes would move a certain way. And uh, that's what influenced me. And so once I saw that, I just dove right into it. I like what I see in the painting, his painting, and I want to try and enhance it and not cover it up. You know how you, when you're a kid and you lay down on the lawn and look at the clouds and make objects out of clouds? Well, that's kind of the same thing. And what I see in here, this sort of mid-tone shape that goes all the way through there was a draft horse. I even see a little face in there somewhere. I think it's... Anyway. And so uh, right off the bat, I saw how these other artists are really honoring this project. I can guarantee you not one of us really knows where the heck we're going right at first. I think what Doug is doing is opening the conversation about how there's crossover and you can bring this side of the camp into the fold and you can bring that side together and you can see how they could harmoniously exist. It's a snapshot in time between the careers of these various artists and how they have taken a moment to merge into this, into this event. It's very difficult once you establish yourself with a certain style to move away from that style. Right? The marketplace expects you to paint in a certain way. So I think they also see this as a way of being able to play around with something interesting and unique that is a break from what they're normally doing. Um, like I don't know many contemporary abstract artists. Um, most of my networking and acquaintances are all with traditional artists. I think we need to evolve and stop being stuck. Try something different. And that's why I chose to do this show. It's just paint and canvas. It's not life and death, you know, so. I'm really tempted to just kind of bring in more of that light. I'm not going into this with a plan of, okay, I want these works to develop a certain way. I'm just going to work with what's in front of me. I don't know if that's going to be recontextualizing the painting. I don't know how that works. Certainly, I don't want to cover up the entire painting. Doug is, uh, is a talented man and I you know, trust him to do whatever he is, what, uh, what, what he's going to do with it. So you just have to leave your ego somewhere else and then just try and, and, and you know, honor the process uh, the, uh, uh, and, and just work within those limitations to hopefully uh, the show will be exciting. I want it to be like crazy wonderful, crazy wonderful, and people are going to walk in and go, what the heck? It's kind of a continuous line from abstraction to realism, and we all fall somewhere in that line. And what I realize is it doesn't, have to, it doesn't matter if it's something that you can see, uh, it's a horse, it's a person, or if it's pure just color and shapes. Um, they're all speaking the same language, shape, color, value. So for me, the only difference between the two is that one, you can tell what it is, and the other, you can't. I think that people look at shapes, they look at composition, they look at color, and they're trying to tell a story or, or trying to get a message across or trying to get a feeling across. And, and I think that's universal. Where the divide is, and, and that's what I want people to start looking at, I think, in this is where do they fall? Because I, I really truly believe that what, uh, what any individual artist creates is only part of what that is, uh, that, that dialogue. Art truly exists in that gray area when somebody is approaching artwork and viewing it and bringing their life story to it. We all have perception that is our own perception of what reality looks like to us. When I try to represent that with paint and canvas, I still have to alter what I see to make my perception 
translate on canvas. So I'm abstracting, even though I'm doing, you know, quote, realism. So if you paint an apple completely realistic, it's, after all, it's still just paint. Values and colors and shapes, and you flatten it down that way. And then it becomes a pure abstraction when you look at it with that mindset. So there's no real true um, painting other than a, a, a complete abstracted form. Art cannot be separated from life. It is the expression of the greatest need of which life is capable. And we value art not because of the skilled product, but because of its revelation of a life's experience. The Art Spirit by Robert Henry. We're, we're, we're creating from our hearts and our souls with someone else's painting underneath our white canvas that's normally not there. Oof, touches me. What I'm excited about is the, the sheer fact that artists of this caliber are, are uh, engaging in this conversation in such a meaningful way and they're really excited about having this conversation too. Uh, you know, the people who win here truly are, are the artists, but, but who could be winners are, are collectors because of the, uh, that education and, and, and uh, the exposure to an event like this. The story of the painting itself has a marketability, and I think that's where this show really is going to have the, the most appeal to collectors of abstract and representational. It really increases the value of the painting because now you've got creative input from two very good artists. In addition to that, it's a unique piece. And I think there are collectors that are going to come in and say, what a fantastic, unique, great idea. And here's my chance to have this one-of-a-kind piece. There will never be another collaborative piece like this again. To see the whole body of work and to see how these artists all had a bit of a different interpretation, it's certainly going to start some conversations. This really is a bridge uh, that that combines, that walks between representationalism and abstraction. Uh, and that, you don't see that very much nowadays. And I hope that, that people take away this, just this sense that these two worlds are, are merging uh, and that it's creating like a whole new vision. Uh, and that, that to me is, is phenomenal. Uh, and I do hope that people appreciate the, the, the groundbreaking uh, sense of this.